Around 120 of Britain's top legal professionals have signed a declaration of conscience stating they will not prosecute eco-protesters brought before the courts. The lawyers have also said they will not act on behalf of clients involved in oil and gas production. Critics say they are ignoring the cab rank principle, whereby, whereby lawyers must take on any case that they are available for. So joining me now to discuss this is a family law barrister, Sarah Fillimore. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Sarah. Thank you. So why shouldn't barristers pick and choose which jobs they take? Because it's a fundamental cornerstone of our ethical obligations that we don't discriminate against people on the basis that we don't like them, we think they're a bit unpleasant, or we don't agree with the cause because we don't deny legal representation to people. You can see just immediately how dangerous that would be. Somebody who's not popular, somebody who's accused of doing a horrible thing, can't find anyone to represent them. Because everyone is entitled to their day in court yeah. and, and their defence. What specifically, do, what kind of breach is this for a barrister to say no? Is there, there's a code of conduct? To say yeah, no? there's a code of conduct. I think this involves conduct rules 28, 29 and 30, Rule 28 says you can't discriminate against somebody because you or other people, interestingly, find them repulsive. And um, Rule 29 is the cab rank rule. If you have got the right competence, if you've got available time, and if you're being paid enough money, you must take on a case. Now, I, I do quite agree, bizarrely, with Mr Morton when he says that the cab rank rule isn't really the issue here because, of course, the rich fossil fuel companies are going to be able to find representation of their choice. That's about having the financial freedom. But where it is hugely important is for lawyers like me, who are legally aided, I do family work, the criminal bar, I think, have rightly been very angered by this because it's not merely saying barristers can pick and choose who they represent. It's saying barristers are then identified with who they represent. Right. And we can't possibly represent these people. They're so awful. So let's clarify that. You mentioned Morm. You mentioned Jolly and Morm. Jolly and yeah. Morm is, is one of the major signatories of this uh, declaration. Uh, we actually do have a statement um, from Jolly and Morm. This was what he said. He said, the cab rank rule is bound up inseparably with the idea that the law is right and its ends are worth upholding. But the law is not always right. Sometimes the law is ugly. Sometimes it is wrong. We should not be forced to work for the law's wrongful ends by helping deliver new fossil fuel projects. We should not be forced to prosecute our brave friends who, whose conduct, protesting against the destruction of the planet, the law wrongly criminalises. Now, Sarah, so what's wrong with uh, Johnny Morm's perspective there? He's absolutely right that the law is not always wonderful. There are sometimes very wicked laws and there's a moral obligation on all of us to think, is this the kind of law that I have to instantly disobey because it's so abhorrent? Mm -hmm. Or is this the kind of law I will campaign to change while obeying it? I would venture to suggest that in a secular Western democracy, you're not going to find many of the first. Um, there may well be a lot of the second. And I think what uh, Morm and the others are doing are relying on the example of David Perry um, KC. He got a lot of flack in 2021 for saying he was going to represent the Chinese government who were prosecuting pro-democracy protesters. Mm -hmm. Now, that arguably, you could say, well, you can't not represent the Chinese government just because people don't like them. That's discrimination. But it is more nuanced than that, because arguably it could be a code of conduct breach to represent a government which was trying to deny such a fundamental human right from its citizens. Yes. But that's the distinction, isn't it, between a clear cut law, which is repulsive, and this rather wider nebulous, well, we just don't like the politics of the fossil fuel companies. I mean, that's a different question, isn't it? Because actually we're seeing more and more the politicisation of, uh, of the law legal profession. Jolly and Morm is a good example. I mean, he runs, what is it, the Good Law Project. Mm. Uh, I mean, that in itself is a problem, isn't it, when, when, when the law becomes politicised? Uh, absolutely. It's the same reason why it's a problem if you won't represent an individual because you think they're repulsive. I mean, I'm a family law. I've represented paedophiles. Now, is Jolien Morn saying that as a matter of conscience, I should simply refuse to represent these men? And if I do represent them, I've got to take the risk that people will say, oh, you're a bit pro paedophile then, are you, Sarah? I mean, right. th this is the absurdity. I don't represent men and women who've done horrible things to children because I support their right to do horrible things to children. I represent them because everybody has that right. So that's a really uh, difficult question, isn't it? Because, of course, even someone who is guilty of such an abhorrent act needs the right to have a def uh, defence. Well, you know. I ask everybody, what would you do if you were accused of a serious criminal offence? We know people who are innocent are accused of serious criminal offences. Exactly. We know a lot of them go to prison for a very long time. You would want a lawyer 
who didn't turn around and say, well, I'm not sure about representing you because you're a bit dodgy and I don't want people to judge me. You want a lawyer who said, I am going to represent you to the best of my ability without fear and without favour. And that's why this declaration, I think, is so dangerous. You could just dismiss it as empty preening posturing because none of the signatories of that declaration, I think, could get anywhere near a prosecution brief. Jolien Morn is a tax specialist. One of the signatories of this declaration has been disbarred for okay. contemptuously leaking well, that, a Supreme Court judgment. That sounds like posturing then. None, <laughs> of, none of these people are going to get near a criminal court. So you might say, oh, well, why are you worried, Sarah? What, what's all the fuss about? And the reason I'm worried is what we've just been talking about. This, by extension, saying lawyers must, according to their conscience, decide who they represent. And those of us who will still represent those people must then accept guilt by association. Well, because if they make a judgment, they're effectively bypassing due process themselves. They're mm. saying, I've decided you're guilty or innocent, so there's that. Mm. But this thing about guilt by association, I think, is absolutely key. Because more and more, that is coming up. Whenever I defend the free speech rights of someone who says something horrible, I'm told that I must therefore endorse the horrible things they've said. This is a broader problem in society now. Isn't it, it? It's getting really ugly and really dangerous. And I know you are going to talk uh, later about what happened to Kelly J. Keane in Auckland. And that, I think, is a fantastic example of just how dangerous this is. So we should clarify, Kelly J. Keane, women's rights campaigner. She has this Let Women Speak event in Auckland, mm. New Zealand. The, pl the protesters amass around her. We can see some images there. It's absolutely terrifying. There are no police. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's almost as though the police have absented themselves uh, from the situation. They've left this woman in this very vulnerable position. It's lucky that someone wasn't killed or seriously injured, you know? It's, it's very lucky. I've seen the footage of, an, uh, I understand, a 70-year-old woman being punched repeatedly in the face. And you've told me you can't show that footage before the watershed because it's too disturbing. Correct. Now, we've also got the New Zealand Deputy Prime Minister going on television saying that Kelly J. Keane is abhorrent and ridiculous. Now, that's so, actually, we've got that clip, I think. If we can have a look at that clip, because I think that is absolutely key. This is Carmel Cepoloni, the Deputy Prime Minister of New Zealand. In my mind, that woman and her views are abhorrent and actually in some ways quite ridiculous. Uh, but I guess my personal approach is just to go like this. Deputy Prime Minister of New Zealand, what do we do when, when major political figures are making those kinds of judgments about people who want a conversation and have a different viewpoint? That is the politicisation of, well, I know it's yeah. politics, but it's, it means that it has an impact on whether the law is correctly enforced, doesn't well, it? Well, you see what happened. I think Kelly J. Keane was lucky to escape with her life, or at least without being seriously hurt. We've seen today um, at Reformers Tree in Hyde Park, a group of um, women who believe sex is real, it matters, effectively kettled by the by protesters mm. and the police walking away. Because this is what the problem with Jolien Morn and his declaration is. He's a tentacle on this octopus, which is saying, if you don't toe the line and believe what we believe, then you are a non-person. Kelly J. Keane was described variously as a monster, a thing by people tweeting about her. One of the politicians yeah. described her as that thing. Yeah. And you know, we, we all know how the Rwandan massacre started. Um, people were encouraged to call their opponents cockroaches on the local radio. This is how every um, demonisation and attack on individuals starts by dehumanising them. Yes. And Morn doesn't just reserve his ire for the fossil fuels. I'm sure lots of people watching would go, well, they are horrible companies. Yeah, good on you, Jolien. Remember, this is also the man who called Fair Cop, an organisation of which I am an identifiable public member, akin to a terrorist organisation that should be prescribed. Now, I made a formal complaint about that to the Bar Standards Board because I said that is inflammatory. That is putting me at risk of harm. Yes. They weren't interested. Morn has also referred to a serving judge as transphobe adjacent because he didn't like what she was saying. So he doesn't just focus on climate change and fossil fuels. He's part of that much wider movement that says if you do not think as we think, then you are going to be denied the protection of the law, the police and politicians can talk about you in the language we've just heard. So we, we don't have much time, but I know that you, you've said on Twitter that you actually feel that the signatories here ought to be debarred, in fact. Do you stand by that? My first instinctive reaction, I think, when you asked me about it, was to say, disbar the lot. And I thought about it and I reflected. I thought, was that too harsh? No. You cannot be a preening, posturing activist. The code of conduct is not pick and mix. If you've declared you are going to flout one of the cornerstones of our professional ethical obligations, then you can't be a barrister. So I say disbar the lot. Sarah Fillimore, thank you very much indeed. <laughs>